All right. Welcome, church. My name is Pastor Jay, and I want to welcome you to uh, our Zoom gathering for today. Um, if you're on the call, thank you guys for, for joining us live and participating here. If you're on Facebook Live, thank you for joining us uh, there. And if you're going to watch this recording later, I um, just want to bless you guys as you guys do that. So um, if, if you guys haven't been counting, uh, we are six weeks into the shelter-in-place order. And uh, I, I hear a lot that people just have a bunch of free time, right? And, you know, I have three kids, so that's not necessarily true for us, but I am more present at home. And so I wanted to ask us and kind of start us off with a little bit of an icebreaker. What's been a fun or creative outlet for you during this time? Or what has made you laugh and brought you joy? And so if you guys can uh, respond back, uh, you know, on, on the comment section or the chat box. And, and let's see, I want to see what's been a fun or creative outlet for you during this time, as well as what has made you laugh and brought you joy. So go ahead, if you can, um, put, that on, uh, put that in the chat box. Martin says, uh, the Martin family says, performing the soundtrack of Hamilton with our family. I, I wish I can hear that recording. Tom Cho says, dance parties. Uh, Elliot Chung says, uh, Shalom and I set up the inflatable pool. Oh, that's, especially in these last few days, that must have been glorious. Uh, the Trejo say, uh, playing Mario Party with the Kims last night was so fun. I bet that sounds awesome. Uh, Lily says, uh, learning how to draw on my tablet, so different than drawing on paper. I, I bet that's got to take some practice and talent. Tanya says, uh, my wife says, kids water play. Yeah, that was tons of fun. Daisy said, drawing and playing games with friends. Uh, Noah Choi says, making Christian memes. <laughs> that's cool. You got to share some with us, man. The Herald said, uh, we built a volcano yesterday. We've also been playing board games with our church brothers. Uh, Hannah says, or no, Kareen says drawing. Hannah says learning how to cook some family dishes. Um, Winston says building Legos with the Mia. Ran, oh, they camped in the backyard? That's cool. Uh, Stricker said playing the game Trouble as a family. Uh, that's tons of fun. What about, uh, is there anything on Facebook Live that uh, people are commenting back? I can't see it, so if someone can type that in, that'd be great. <clears throat> Rand's mom says cooking, or um, uh, maybe that, maybe that's Elliot's mom. <laughs> and then uh, <clears throat> also that's art for kids hub. That's learning how to draw. Man, this is awesome. Um, these are some of the some great uh, just outlets, creative outlets, right, for having fun and and, and uh, experiencing joy in this time. So that's awesome, man. So I want to continue to just bless us that uh, as we're home. There, there's a, a unique opportunity that we get to have to engage, engage with each other, engage with our family, um, and really start to learn new things. So that's awesome to see uh, what some of us have been doing. So uh, if you guys don't know, we are in a new series in Genesis. Uh, last week, Matt Stricker literally knocked it out of the park. He did an amazing job giving us an overview of the grand narrative of scripture. If you missed it, I encourage you, please check it out. Uh, it's on our website as well as on our YouTube page. So go ahead and do that. Today, we are going uh, to the beginning with Genesis 1, and we are looking at the creation narrative, specifically the creation of man. And so uh, our specific passage for, passage for today is going to be Genesis 1, 26 through 31. And I believe it'll be on the screen. So here it is. Uh, we're going to read this together. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. 
Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Today we're, we're looking at uh, specifically the, the creation of man narrative. And that's typically uh, discussed as being the image of God, bearing the image of God. And so I kind of want to start us off with another discussion question, because um, sometimes when we, when we think about image of God, it's a loaded uh, concept within the Christian world. And so here's the question that I want us to kind of uh, discuss. What's been your personal experience with the image of God? What emotions are stirred for you when you hear or think about the image of God? What's been your personal experience with the image of God? What emotions are stirred for you as you hear and think about the image of God? And so if you can, I'd love for you guys, if you guys can chat that into the text box, uh, Facebook Live, if you guys can chat that in too. Um, I just want to see, because I feel like there's a whole range that uh, some of us would be sharing. This isn't easy to answer. So I do want to give you guys a little bit, bit of time to think about and respond to this. Meg said, uh, all the different ethnicities all around the globe, all at once. That's great. The Trejos, uh, I'm not sure if that's Amanda or Chris, but it says glorious, full of light. Noe says, it reminds me that we have the power within us to persist and stand up for what's right and truthful. Also to be healthy and treat our body as God's temple. You sure do that really well, Noe. <laughs> uh, Elliot says, feels like I'm created for something greater. Uh-huh, amen to that. The Heralds, uh, it's hard for us to believe sometimes that there's a perfect loving being and we're somehow a reflection of it. Noah Choi <clears throat> says, the real identity for humanity, okay? Katie Herp said, inherent value and worth. Yeah, that's very, very true. And on Facebook, I think this is Jay Lee, says the dignity of life, of human rights. So I, I oh, okay, one more. Alex says, uh, always with his arms open, patiently waiting. And then uh, one of the Martins said, recognizing beauty in everyone. All right. So I, <clears throat> I gotta be a little candid. Uh, Part of me was thinking that there might be a couple of like negative responses that get stirred and when we think about the image of God. Uh, for me personally and what I've heard and, and what I've experienced and, and a lot of people around me is that image of God can also be used negatively. It can be used in a sense that uh, it, it almost um, <clears throat> belittles the, the uniqueness of culture, the uniqueness of how each of us are created. That, oh, you just created an image of God. It's okay. We're all the same. We're all good. Right? So... So I thought of that. Uh, Tom also said a new person, creation, and falling short. These are great. And I thank you guys for, um, for these responses and, and taking the time to think through that and share it. So <clears throat> for me, the best analogy that I could think of uh, that I could come up with to help us start to uh, wrap our heads around being created in, in the image of God is how children have certain traits that resemble their parents. And it's not just physical traits. Although that is probably the easiest to identify, but also similarity in personality traits. If you guys don't know, I have three daughters. All are super beautiful. Two of them have some sass in them. And what's funny is my wife, uh, Tanya, and I, we will banter about who that sass comes from. And we're in agreement. I talked about it with her uh, that it comes from both of us that some of that spiciness really is, is in Tanya and in myself. So in the same way to be created in the image of God is to bear a resemblance, to share in his image, to have a likeness to God. 
So when you look across all of creation, you would see in humans a likeness and resemblance to the creator. Now this resemblance uh, wasn't just in form, but also likeness and attributes. Humans were created to think and reason, to, uh, to have free will, to be moral, to be social and spiritual, all in likeness to God. There is a uniqueness, uh, a set of partness, if you will, to being created in God's image, which wasn't for the sake of simply being unique. Humans are created in the image of God so that ultimately we could be in relationship with God. Now, our passage today, there is just so much to unpack, uh, but there seem to be kind of like three specific things about the uniqueness of being created in, in the image of God and the relationship that God invited humans into that I, I want to highlight for us today. The first one is this. Humans were, were, the, grand, uh, humans were the grand culmination of God's creation. We see it in the way the creation narrative is written. Genesis 1 is poetry as much as it is a creation narrative. So when you understand Genesis 1, as you read it through the lens of poetry, you start to identify the literary pattern that is used. And this pattern has a certain flow to it that you start to feel as the narrative unfolds. In the beginning, God said, let there be, and it was so. God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the next day. It's where this pattern is disrupted that our attention gets drawn into the details of the narrative. We see a disruption in day three and again in day four. By day five, the, the disruption becomes even more noticeable as it says, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase. When we get to the disruption in day six, we realize this is where it peaks. Something special is happening and it's in verse 26. Then God said, let us create mankind in our image, in our likeness. Humans were the grand culmination of God's creation. Psalm 8, 5 through 6 says, you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. It was the goodness of God to create humans as the grand culmination of his creation because it put on full display the special and unique status of being created in God's image. Humans were created and crowned with glory because of who our creator is. Here's a second highlight for us today. God deliberated and collaborated together in the creation of humans. Everything else in creation was simple. God said, let there be, and it was so. God commanded and creation happened. But for humans, there was triune consultation. Let us, God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, deliberated and collaborated together in the creation of man. In other words, there was an active participation and collective wisdom from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the creation of humans. When humans were created in the image of God, they were created in the likeness of God, who is in eternal, perfect, and active relationship together in the three persons of the Trinity. Humans were created to be relational because that's who our creator is. Here's highlight number three. God gave humans dominion, blessing, and provision. God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God entrusted humans to rule over his creation as part of being created in the image of God. He also blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. After the blessing, God gives his provision. Humans were not only given dominion and blessed to fill and rule over God's creation, but creation 
it itself was God's provision to humans in order for them to live and thrive. Creation existed in perfect harmony. And the Hebrew word for that is shalom, which means complete, perfect, and full. Now, it's at this time that I, I almost want to naively say, man, since we're all created in the image of God, let's just go and do better. Let's stop. Let's kind of go out and just love our neighbors and things will be good. Yet, we, we all know better. This image that we were formed in became corrupted in the fall. And yes, I'm jumping ahead. The image of God we now see in each other and in others is in fact corrupted and broken. So that when you see our fellow humans, we don't see the image of God in each other. Rather, we see what is distorted, stained, and corrupted. And because of that fall, because of the disobedience, because of the break in relationship with God, what God's original creation, the intention of that becomes distorted too. So that when we say that humans were the grand culmination of God's creation, that, that becomes pride for us. And when we say that God deliberated and collaborated together in the creation of humans, uh, that becomes our self-reliance and our independence apart from God. Because we can do it, right? We got what it takes. And it's also when we say that God gave humans dominion, blessing, and provision, that all that turns into greed and dominance over fellow humans. This is why really sadly, we hear so many stories of, of Asians encountering racist and hateful experiences as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. This is also why we see news reports of frontline medical workers harassed and berated for being present at protests against the shelter-in-place order. And it's also why we would need organizations like Solidarity to create a neighbor relief fund specifically to aid those who are targeted and blocked from any federal relief due to their immigration status. The answer that we seek isn't found in looking back at Genesis 1 and how we were all created in God's image. That was broken. That was corrupted. Rather, the answer is found in the sanctified image of God in Christ Jesus. God's word says in Colossians 1, 15, the son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. In Hebrews 1, 3, it says, the son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by, the, by his powerful word. And after, having, uh, after he provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. I love this quote uh, by one of the early church fathers. It's uh, from Gregory of Nyssa. And he says, we possess the original image of God by creation. We acquire the sanctified image of God by free will. When we look at Christ um, and what, well, when we look at the, the original image of God and that when the fall happened, when man disobeyed God, broke that relationship, that, that image became corrupted. It became broken and distorted. It became diseased. And I want to contrast this to the image of God, the sanctified image of God in Christ Jesus. Because when we look at the, the passion of Christ, that passion week, we see that his physical body was brutally mutilated. He suffered. He broke. He died in order that we might ha have new life, that we might be able to attain this new image of God, this sanctified image of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, we all who with unveiled faces contemplate, uh, or in other words, reflect the Lord's glory. We are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. This, this uh, verse really talks about the glory of God that, that uh, humans were originally created in. 
that because of the fall, uh, that image became distorted. Yet in God's uh, wisdom and his love and his grace, he provided his son, Christ Jesus, uh, that we would experience an ever greater glory in him. And it's our opportunity to step into that and to experience that. It's a surrendering, it's a submission, and then it's a life of discipleship. Romans 8, 9, uh, 8 29 says, <clears throat> For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God's word talks about from glory to glory. But that glory, that second glory of, of attaining the sanctified image of God in Christ Jesus comes from us surrendering to him. And what's amazing, too, is that uh, as we looked at in the creation narrative, all the aspects of God's goodness, right, his wisdom, uh, his glory, his, his honor that he gave us, his provision, God does it the same, does the same in his son, Jesus. Where it says that God foreknew, he has chosen us to be conformed into the image of his son, that we might be reborn into a new glorified, sanctified image in Christ. As a result of that, we now have the opportunity to live differently. One of the aspects of uh, being created in the image of God is this. When we look at God being a God of justice, a God of mercy, we don't, we don't display those attributes necessarily. We don't want to possess those attributes simply because we are created in his image. Those attributes are activated as we're in relationship with God. And when we look at the image of God in Genesis 1, that was distorted, that was broken. And that's not something that we can go back to. But as we look forward to the image of Christ and his word that says, I have given you new purpose, that I've sent you out to be my ambassadors, and that I will always be with you until the ends of the earth. That we get to join in God with a new mission, that we get to experience a deeper relationship with Christ as we uh, step into what he's doing. As I was um, kind of preparing for the message today, <clears throat> the three things that got highlighted, uh, there's also just kind of some hopeful things, um, as well as some, some call to responses that I felt like God really put on my heart. When we look at um, humans being created uh, as the grand culmination of, of God's creation, that when we look at the midst of this global pandemic, when so much of the world, it almost feels like the whole world is on lockdown, and that so much in our future seems uncertain, that that truth of who humans were in the grand scheme of God's creation, that that still holds true. God hasn't forsaken us. His heart towards us has not changed. The goodness of God to create humans as the grand culmination of his creation is still true. And for us, we're to have that hope because of the image of Christ. The second response is that when we look at uh, God creating humans through deliberation and intentional collaboration amongst himself, that it pointed to this relationship that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had, and that we were to reflect that. I think our response in the midst of all that's happening right now is that we need to press into God. We need to give time and energy to deepening and maturing our relationship with God. And Part of that is to know that God is actively present in this global pandemic. But there's no way for us to know that unless we're pressing into relationship with him. And the last kind of commentary is this. When God gave um, dominion, blessing, and provision to humans, right, that where we're at right now, the church is and needs to be really actively engaged and actively present in, in the hurting and the brokenness of this world. And what I felt like God putting on my heart is, is kind of a, a third response is that we need to identify what our purpose is right now. We need to step into that. We need to engage it. We need to be activated as a church amongst 
our neighbors, amongst our family, amongst our friends who are hurting and broken. And what's, uh, what's great when Amanda stepped up and was like, hey, here's an opportunity with uh, the, the medical staff at, at these hospitals and the church responded, we saw how beautiful that was. And that's the beauty and, and that's the joy and, and that's kind of the new glory that God's inviting us into. And so out of response to uh, this, this whole image of God idea, it's really that God's heart for us has never changed. We are still created as, as kind of the, the peak of God's creation. His heart towards us is the same. We as a church, we personally need to press into relationship with God. We need to step into what he's doing. And we need to ask him, what is our purpose? What is our response to what's happening right now? And so um, to kind of close our time, uh, I wanted to give us a little bit of space because I feel like there's, um, it's not easy. I'll say that. When we look at uh, the, the quote from Gregory of, of Nisa, it says that we acquire the sanctified image of God by free will. That is, my brothers and sisters, a daily choice. And for a lot of us um, in this time of being at home and in the time of stress and so much change and so much uncertainty, it, it feels like this pressing, it feels like a pressure, it's stress. And oftentimes uh, there'll be both good and bad that comes out of it, both healthy and unhealthy. And what's amazing is that in, in that pressure, that pressure is, is ultimately um, an experience of being refined. But what's great about um, that process of sanctification is that we get to do it together. And so I wanted to give us a little bit of space to kind of really respond to um, this whole idea of image of God. And so I got three questions that I, I want to give us time to discuss amongst ourselves. Uh, I think we're going to do uh, breakout groups. We're going to give you a little more time this time. We're going to have about six minutes, I think. Um, but here's the question. Where have you felt pulled to reflect a broken and corrupted image of God? Another question that we can answer is, where have you experienced the sanctified image of God in Christ? And the last question is this, where do you need help to press deeper into the image of God in Christ? And so I'm giving you guys three questions and, and really pick one, whatever you feel comfortable uh, sharing and do that with your group. All right. So I'm going to hand it over to Elliot to uh, break us into groups. If you're on Facebook Live, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to interact or maybe Emily. One of us, someone will be interacting with you guys. But would you guys share too? And I know it feels, it's a little personal. Yeah, it is. So would, would you take a risk and share? But where have you felt pulled to reflect the broken and corrupted image of God? Where have you experienced the sanctified image of God in Christ? And then where do you need help to press deeper into the image of God in Christ? Yeah, thanks for that, Jay. Hey, uh, so church family, uh, we're in a minute, we're about to go to breakout groups. Uh, there'll be a group, uh, about three, three to four people in a group, and we'll, we'll be in it for about five minutes. Uh, but unfortunately right now, um, our slides somehow just mysteriously, dis mysteriously disappeared uh, in the middle of service. And so what we did is we added the, uh, the questions in the chat. Um, take uh, maybe about like a quick, uh, I don't know, 15 seconds to write one of the questions down or copy paste it if you're using your laptop uh, or take a picture of it with your phone uh, or something where you could remember those questions i'll give you about yeah about 15 20 seconds to do that and after after that i'll be sending you to your breakout rooms uh breakout rooms um so um go ahead and do that for a little bit um and actually let's let's uh because time uh time wise Let's do two to three um, people per uh, per room, and uh, let's see here. Let's see if we could do. Let's do about five minutes um, per per room. All right, all right. So if you don't have the questions, or if if y'all got the questions, uh, here we go. We're gonna go into break off groups now. All right, and for, uh, so I think people are going into their breakout rooms 
And this, we're going to be in this for about five minutes. So if you're on Facebook or if you're on Zoom, feel free to click the little button that tells you to go to the breakout rooms. Um, if not, that's fine. John, I, Joel, you're, you're good. <laughs> if you want to stay here with me, that's fine too. Um, uh, but for those of us who are on Facebook, I will be engaging with you. Uh, I'll be kind of narrating with you, I guess. And um, But I could see all your comments. Um, I'm actually, so, so feel free to kind of, um, share your thoughts on the question. Once again, the question is, um, where have you felt uh, pulled to reflect on the broken and corrupted image of God? Uh, let me see. Maybe I can see it better here. Ah, where have you experienced a sanctified image of God in Christ? Where do you need to, where uh, do you need help to press deeper into the image of God in Christ? Um, or Brianna says, I uh, need to press deeper by reading the Bible. It's so hard for me. I feel you. Sometimes, like, the Bible is a confusing. <laughs> there's, some of them are, are confusing, and we need some help. And, you know, um, one thing that's been helpful for me, um, especially when I first kind of um, decided to uh, take my faith seriously, is to read it with a group of friends. And just to be like, or, you know, and so, um, and so that was really helpful, just kind of bounce off thoughts and ideas about it. Uh, another thing that's really helpful, oh, actually for me, um, I I had to break. It was helpful for me to read in smaller parts. So I would read, um, you know, Psalms, like a chapter of Psalms, and just kind of try to soak in whatever I can from Psalms. Um, First John was so important to me. First John, it's it's an easy book. It's an easy letter. Um, and so when I read through, it, it's like, oh yeah, it's it seems like a personal letter. And uh, and um, yeah, so that was really helpful for me. Um, any other thoughts on Facebook? Any other thoughts about um, where we need to press into in terms of uh, being the image of God? Yeah, yeah, Brianna. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I think um, in light of what's happening globally, uh, with the pandemic um yeah, that's kind of like my biggest pull actually where um i'm just thinking about how broken our world is and just some of the uh, responses that we've been hearing like jay mentioned it too about um the, the violence and discrimination and discrimination against asians globally um the the protests that we've been seeing um there's a little bit of um yeah a little bit like we're we're not reflecting the image of God when we do that uh, fully. Emily says I've talked about this uh, with my small group, but that's daily decision. That daily de decision is hard for me these days. The discipline that comes with pressing into that relationship, yeah, for sure. But having other people journey that with you, it's so helpful. You know, um, one thing that I realized too, and I think um, I think this has been helpful for me to process this season as a trauma like globally we're going through this trauma together globally we're experiencing some level of depression and um and so i think it, it's allowed me to give uh myself grace uh give others a lot of grace and yeah even some of the re responses that we talked about earlier about um like there's no violence is never kind of a good idea <laughs> um but at the same time like we have to understand everyone's hurting, everyone's suffering, everyone's having a difficult time. Yeah. And so even, even on our personal level with our relationship with God, um, we, we know what the right thing to do is, but it's hard. It's hard to, um, yeah, it's hard to press in and allowing ourselves to have that grace is good. Oh, okay. All right, so ah, some people got kicked off on Zoom, so I gotta get people back in. All right, so we have about um, 10 seconds, and looks like we'll be going back soon. And uh, so stay, um, so hang in there, and um, we'll be going back to the main session. Thanks, Facebook, for engaging.
actually I, facebook is here I'm, i have my phone with me on so i was talking down here but y'all are really over there hey welcome back everyone hope you had a good uh discussion time with your breakout groups welcome back let's give everyone a couple minutes um not a couple minutes a moment to get back to the main session good to see all your back uh, coming back hey um so while we're waiting for people to come back let's go ahead and share um uh, feel free to type in uh some response of how that time was like if something came up if if there's a highlight thought that pops in um feel free to share that in the chat function and then um you know we'll, um yeah we'll share that with everyone any thoughts on how that time was together? Any any highlights from your breakout group time? Or if someone wants to share too, that's totally fine. All right. All right. I love the honesty of our group. Yeah. Six minutes was too short. Yep, that's always, that's just gonna be the nature of this stuff. It's always gonna be way too short, way too short. Yeah, any other thoughts? Yeah, and going back to Tommy's comment, I, I like just, not just our group, but like our church. I, I love how our church is going to be open about stuff. <laughs> about our junk and just things that we carry together and i love that we are a church that we can receive that and process that together <laughs> wilson said we got to go at least 12 to 15 minutes next time that would be great <laughs> yeah anyone else have any thoughts and reflections from your breakout group sessions And Jay, feel free to chime in. Anything for you? Um, if there's anything you want to wrap up um, before we um, we transition. Oh, sorry, Karina. Were you gonna share something? I just unmuted you. Oh, uh, I was gonna share real quick, man. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I think so. One of the things that I shared was like uh, I think in the state of California, how the governor was trying to provide relief funds for like uh, illegal immigrants or whatever but also seeing like posts of like, uh, or undocumented people and like also seeing posts about like people trying to go against that or like certain like law firms trying to go against that. Uh, it's like a reflection of like that brokenness uh, because yeah. at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We're all trying to survive uh, through this pandemic. So it's just, you see the brokenness within that. I'm like, bro, just allow other people to help other people, you know, but then the also like the sanctified uh like god being like the sanctification of like god or whatever his image is like seeing like church groups like within even like this uh, how solidarity sends out that thing of like oh you can you can go uh do like drive bys for like food and stuff uh to drop off food to people that need you know food uh it's like a beautiful image of like yeah there's this brokenness but if the church steps up and lives out what they say they believe there's like also this like uh, people can see like the truth and the love that is Jesus do that and stuff. So yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, that, that, that reminds me of a quote. Uh, I forgot who said it, but um, this person said that um, this a time like this is unique for the church because we have a unique say in like we we have a unique message for in times like this where we we can offer we could be the vehicle of hope and we can embody that in what we say and how we react. You know, and so definitely like a part of our Imago Day living up to the image of God is responding in that way of how can we look after the least and last of these in times like these, you know, and like, I, I think one of the things that I initially saw a lot of a lot of quotes is like, the church is here for a time as such as these. And I think um, part of our Imago Day is exactly that, you know, exactly what you shared and exactly how like our church stepped up in like helping our, uh, the healthcare professionals or how Solidarity and Hoya has been stepping up and serving the needs of the community, you know? And so that's, that's what the body of Christ, that's what it means to be the image of God. Um, some other responses that we're getting from the chat is um, we talked about the, and this is from Trails. We talked about the important reminder of seeing the image of God in all people, 
even those who are frustrating to us who have different beliefs and opinions yeah and you know what i i definitely need jesus to do that um for sure we all need to press into jesus to do that even more um sonia wrote i i really love that uh what tom just said about this brokenness of the image of god as father and the brokenness of the world around that image yeah yeah i feel that too a lot of brokenness um hannah um, wrote that i was going to say the same thing as Sonia. <laughs> we're in the same uh, group together uh Rayan said i resonate with that too um jay Wu, yeah and so yeah a lot of us are feeling that too um hey jay do you want to um have anything else to add to that or wrap up um wrap up our time yeah just really quickly um when, when you look at the image of god it, it has to follow the full narrative that yes we were creating the image of god but that that image was broken corrupted right but then we're not left there as, as humans. God had an ultimate plan, and it was in his divine wisdom that he gave us the son. And it's through his son that everything gets redeemed, everything gets sanctified. Now, the, the, the hurt and the brokenness of the original image of God, that runs deep. That's sin, right? It's inherent in us. And the outcome of that is that we have these stories of father wounds. We have these stories of protests against immigrants. We have all of that. But... God's given us the world, uh, given the world, the church to, to be a beacon of light. And we talked about that on Easter. And so for us, there's, there's one sense of a lament of what we've experienced, what others experienced. But then at the same time too, it's also an activation to be the church. So if you guys can, uh, I'm going to pass these questions and some of the notes to our mustard groups. Would you guys continue sharing that in your groups as well as small groups, your families continue to unpack it. Right, Tom, you want to close? Yeah, well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jay, Tom, Elliot. Man, so blessed by all you guys. Hey, just a couple announcements for us. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, to who uh, who gave and and responded to our, kind of our call uh, last week to give to the church. Um, last week, I you know we were looking at it was like a ten thousand um, dollar you know in the red, um, but that's been cut almost in half. Um, and so thank you guys so much for your generosity in that. We still want to continue to be faithful in giving so that we can give more away. Um, we even had another, um, an extra $1,200 given um, to just benevolent. So, so if you are, um, if you're in need, would you please let us know so that we can figure out how to help and um, take care of the church family. Um, and also continue to give because Listen, although we might be coming out of this like social distancing part, um, the, the fallout, the economic fallout from this is going to be pretty substantial. And one great thing that I want to share with you is we did receive um, some of the stimulus money from the government. And so we, we got about $15,000 um, in a forgivable loan from the, from the, the federal government. Um, it was through the SBA. It was called the PPP, which is the uh, Payroll Protection Program. And so... And so that's going to help us as well, but we're looking to the future. This, this, what this pandemic has done is it's going to, um, it'll affect things for a really long time. So we just want to make sure that everybody's taken care of. So please make sure you're sharing um, if you have any needs and we'd love to come alongside of you for that. Um, also, um, you know, continue to connect with us, um, you know, sign up for the email, um, sign up online, be part of our Facebook group. We'd love to connect with you on that. Um, and then also, I just want to say thank you to all the people that have stepped up. Um, our church has actually uh, grown in engagement uh, since the pandemic. You know, normally where we had about 50 people um, at church, you know, a gathering, we have about 65 people um, doing that online every week, like consistently. And so, um, so excited for that. And then the other huge thing is we, uh, we had, um, you know, muster groups formed and we have a, a lot more engagement that throughout the week. And then through that, we've had new leaders step up. Uh, Jay mentioned Amanda, and so we so appreciate that, but we've had a whole, whole bunch of other muster group leaders uh, step up. And so thank you guys so much for your engagement. Uh, this is really our vision of the church. And so I uh, wanna say thank you for that. So as we close today, I just wanna share um, that for me uh, in, our, in, our, in our little group that we just shared in, I, I, what I was really struggling with this morning and struggling with, like at this moment, is continually feeling that I'm not enough. I'm not enough um, 
for for everybody around me. I'm not enough for those who who need me. I'm not I'm not enough for those uh, who um, who I want to be there for. You know, I just it, I'm not enough. I'm not enough uh, to do all the things that that God has called me to do. And it struck me through Jay's um, sermon is that we weren't created to be enough like that. God did not create us and then walk away and go, okay, well, good luck. I hope you guys make it. That was never God's intention. But that um, in a relationship with him, that we're more than enough because of our relationship with God. And so if you're feeling like I'm feeling or you're feeling overwhelmed or you, you've had things that hit you this last couple of weeks or today or whenever, I want to remind you that you are more than enough. God is more than enough when you press back into him. So whatever that looks like for you this week, will you continue to press back into that relationship with God, whether it, even if it's with anger, doubt, disappointment, he can handle it. But I am telling you that to do it apart from him is to live in hopelessness. And so um, be praying for you guys this week, uh, you know, and thank you so much for the ways that you guys are pressing in. I'm so thankful to be a part of this church.